Okay, Tomek Skanatony. It is uh, March 30th, 2015. In the moon, Saaki, some the duck moon. And out for a morning survey of the phenology of uh, Spopikimi, Elizabeth Hall wetlands in Lethbridge, Alberta. It's a somewhat windy morning, but rather warm. It's probably only maybe seven or eight degrees, but to me, that feels really warm today. Um, there is a, definitely a presence of wind, but seasonal change is in the air nonetheless. And this morning I was on the other side of the floodplain, on the other side of the river, and I saw um, the cottonwood catkins are bursting forth over there, so hoping to observe a little bit of that here as well. Um, also hoping to bump into my friends, John Nightingale and John Byrne, who I know uh, took off walking from the other side of the river this morning and are hopefully making their way over this side so we can uh, team up for a round. Yeah, while I'm waiting for the Johns to make their way over, I am attempted again to try and cross uh, over to the Big River Island to check on the nesting situation there to uh, see if they're cashing eggs yet, which I suspect that they are. So maybe I'll take off my sandals here and uh, give it a little bit of a go. reaching the mid-river point. It's where I'm gonna drop my pack off on this little island here. That way I don't have to be concerned about anybody coming up and uh, stealing it on the other side of the river. It was a little bit risky to take the walk crotch deep through uh, the fast moving waters with uh, with my pack as it is. I think I'll wrap my video camera here in a plastic bag, try to ford the rest of the way, hopefully not go uh, for a dip. All right, that wasn't too bad. It was um, crotch deep, <laughs> a little bit higher than uh, the other part, just right by the island where I left my pack. You can see now over here, the, uh, my pack on the island and right off the edge of that island is pretty deep but now I get to go see about the egg caches here you see the uh, the geese and I don't doubt at all if they got some eggs yet the kind of the official biological timing for the egg laying is on the full moon after the equinox and we are not quite at the full moon yet but I thought there might be some eggs here um, already based on how unseasonably warm it is but so far um, it's not looking like it I'm not seeing any cached eggs I'll continue to survey Certainly a lot of geese here getting prepared for it. Woohoo, we have egg number one. All right, so this is a perfect cache spot. See this pile of leaves here in the middle of these willows? Look in here, there we have it. That is a brand new first goose egg of the year. That is a wonderful sight to me. That means the season is on, but just barely on. 
this is a good time to share one of the traditional food ethics and that is that you never take the first of anything that you come across whether it be a plant or animal anything that you want to eat um, if it's just one you don't take it you wait there'll be more that come um, but you never take the first one or the only one and in fact if there's a very limited number and you can see that there's a very limited number you take an even more limited number um, don't be greedy and take whatever you can get just because you can so for me I was very tempted right there back there uh, to take that egg because it's the first egg of the season but um, following protocol I've left it there and if I find another egg here I'll take the other egg a second egg but I won't take the first egg of the season um, that's just bad ethics as far as uh, traditional foods go now I know there's gonna be a lot here um, to come but all the same in fact look at this look at this I'm just coming across something check this out ta-da there's my egg there's my egg right there egg number two in a nest where uh, it's not even covered up um, it's not being incubated and it's left with a rock that's a good egg to take egg number two so I'm gonna take that one hopefully this mama will get her stuff together and uh, but if she just leaves it open like this the the goals are gonna get it anyway so this egg is mine and that's good traditional food ethics an equally important or secondarily important I should say uh, food ethics is that one should not turn one's nose up at food offered now what I said before is don't take the first you know in nature you don't take the first um, if you take the first and only that you come across no others will come but if you wait others will come and then you can take take from them and even at that if they're sparse just take a limited amount and hopefully the next cycle there'll be more of them now I don't plan to take a, any other uh, eggs from this particular island out here there's going to be probably 50 eggs or more laid on this island but I have another location um, where I actually get my goose eggs from where uh, a, gol a nearby golf course has a permit um, to to uh, basically abort those eggs by dipping them in oil anyway so I get all my food eggs and my ceremonial eggs from that island but in this occasion you know even though I was tempted by the first egg because I, I want to I want to taste the, the egg of the season you know this is the season um, you know this is why Easter occurs but I left the first egg I come across the second egg and it was a much better scenario the mother there obviously probably a young mother didn't know what she's doing she's got a rock in there she's got her egg all out in the open for the goals to to get at and so I, I accepted that egg but more than that I should accept um, a, a food offering in general and this is the same as with people if you if you're out in nature and there's food offered in terms of berries and other in other things um, eggs and animals and what have you um, if you don't act like a human being and accept some of those gifts then you can't expect them to be uh, offered in uh, in a continuing manner in the future you have to accept those gifts and it's just like with people if you go to someone's house and they offer you something to eat and you just refuse it then uh, then you're gonna lose out in the long run it's John's the John's <laughs> you haven't picked your cell phone message up have you no no I was crossing the river I know I phoned you when you were crossing the river <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying get off the fucking <laughs> get off the water <laughs> yeah I had to check if it's egg time and it is they're starting the, uh, oh okay yeah yeah, oh, yeah. there's some eggs over there yeah yeah they're just starting so, the, the, the caches just have like one egg in them okay so and how many nest sites 
just two so far, but there's a whole bunch of geese that were oh, hanging out out there. Yeah, yeah there's, there's actually at least a dozen yeah. pairs that I saw out there, no so there's going to be a lot. Not that I've seen so far. Well, they've been seen back. I don't know whether you've seen them, but I think Ken Arik had mentioned it. Yeah, there was a couple of people yeah. that, that yeah. let me know that there's killdeer around, but I haven't yeah. crossed them yet. It's the wide south pool. Um, got a lot of geese out here taking up what, what little islands there are given that the, the pond is so high. I can see the one pair out here is looking at a uh, badger, or not, a <laughs> muskrat. <laughs> muskrat lodge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I wouldn't doubt that they, that they uh, start putting their eggs out there on that muskrat lodge. I've seen geese nest on muskrat lodges before. Yeah. Mallards. And we missed the widgeons. I yeah. think the widgeons came and went. Yeah. You know what he, uh, uh, Ken had also mentioned that he had seen before Eurasian widgeons. Oh, yes. Down by Del Benita on that Cardston. I've seen he's them seen here. Them yeah. Yeah, there was a group that was stopping here every year regularly. And they had one male Eurasian. And I couldn't tell if they had a female Eura Eurasian because of that. <laughs> All is as usual out here at the high level bridge um, with various goose couples um, guarding the concrete anchors that they want to use. This whole patch of bullberries now is in flower. I think the other day when I came by here it was um, partial, but there's a lot of flowers now. I'm surprised that we don't have honeybees out here yet today. Oh, we do. I spoke too soon. Look at this. I don't know if you can hear it, but uh, this plant is a buzz, and there are lots and lots of honeybees working around out here. So finally, finally the emergence of the honeybees with the uh, bullberry blossoms which usually does coincide with the uh, egg laying of the geese. That's a nice sight. All right, this is an important phenological note. <laughs> Earliest emergence of Spopi, the painted turtle, after which I call this pond Spopi Kimi. Um, normally, I mean, we're still in the beginnings of Saaki, some the duck moon. Normally, these guys do not emerge um, until about a month from now. Matsi Kapisaki, some the frog moon. So. This is very early and this actually gets me excited to go check one of the rattlesnake dens and see yeah. if they're up as well because normally as soon as I start seeing the turtles they start seeing snakes. Let's see if I can get them on film. Um, not close, too close. Oh yes, we got somebody interesting here. All right, so we've sorted out that uh, what we got here is a golden crown, crowned uh, kinglet, golden crown kinglet, and which is a uh, new bird for the season for us this year. I don't know if they've all taken off now. They might have. <laughs> yeah, I saw some. Yeah, there's still one in there. There he is. Golden Crown Kinglet. And he's off. <laughs> right in front, there. <laughs> you see it now? No. Oh, I see the kinglet.
Funko and then some, maybe something else. Right. Another warbler species, perhaps. Yeah, well, definitely the kinglets. Yeah. At least one junco, because that last one. Yeah. But, um, and then we heard house finches in there when we first yeah. walked up, so. And the fact that those two kinglets hung around and the others, as I said, took off. Right. Um, tells me it was another species. Right. Albeit unknown. <laughs> Would they be nesting yet? No, no. Yeah. too early for them. But once the once the leaves start popping, everybody's going to be nesting. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's what we had over there in the undergrowth. Right. Yeah, it looks like we got a couple of juncos out this way. There's the edge of that bush pile. Well, oh, look at this tree with the binoculars, right? I didn't realize the Junkos had a light colored bill. Yeah, I've, I've got him in the frame here. Okay. And we've got his song too. Yeah, I was watching him open his bill, but it's a very light colored. Maybe, maybe the Junkos have that. All right up here at one of the rattlesnake dens and we do have a snake. There's one out, John. Is there one out? Yep, there's one. At least one. Yeah, it's a big guy. Yes, he is. There's two, one in the shadow. Three! Oh yeah, yeah, there are. There's several of them out here, John. Sure. Basking. Oh, yeah. now we've upset one. Yeah. Oh, well, well, that's oh, a big wow. one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this is where the biggest one, where <laughs> at least where we released the biggest one in Lethbridge. Yeah. Oh, there's a young one, neonate. Or not a neonate. No, oh, yeah, it's yeah. It's not that young. Actually. Yeah. Actually, it was the head of this one. <laughs> <laughs> They're on to us. Still see one looking peeking over at me. Inside? Yeah. Alright, so the Johns are on their way back across to the other side of the river where they're parked. Um, but that was a that was a great day. Lots of good things we saw. Golden crown kinglets. Um, Dark-eyed juncos, honeybees are out. Um, the turtle, surprisingly, the turtle and the rattlesnakes. I mean, that's unusual, but they're out. And um, this is the, definitely the earliest I've ever seen uh, the reptiles come out. And I guess, you know, in terms of records from others, um, it's not entirely unheard of for mid-March time to start seeing the reptiles, but for me, with the lunar calendar, this is prior to the full moon, prior to the, the Easter moon, basically, and that's very, very early for reptiles to be out. Um, it's not entirely, like, surprising given the, the kind of the heat wave we've been having, the warmth day after day of, of warmth and the, and, the, and the thaw that we've been having. Um, but for me, this is the earliest, definitely the earliest sighting um, for snakes and turtles uh, down here.